What is up, my friends? Welcome, welcome. I want to start this video off first by apologizing for the video quality. I am streaming from my built-in camera on my laptop, which is like making me want to cringe internally. I forgot to charge my camera today. <laughs> and so I have a like external cable that power charges it, but I wasn't sure if it was going to charge while it was running. So I'm just going to give it like five minutes and then I'll switch over to 4K. So apologize for this awkward angle, but we're working with what we've got. Okay. I'm also sweating profusely right now. So on that note, welcome to the video. <laughs> I thought it would be fun today to chat about Marie Forleo, as I'm sure many of you know who she is, but we are going to get into an introduction there. However, if you are watching, let me know in the chat. Say hi. Let me know you're here. You can let me know how your day has been going. I assume for many of you, it's quite late wherever you are. So let me know. Or maybe it's really early if you're on the other side of the world. Let me know as well. <laughs> I am feeling pretty sleepy. So if I start yawning throughout this video, I'm apologizing in advance. <laughs> we have some iced tea, some water. I also have some Canadian classic cookies. Any of my Canadian um, subscribers will know these Leclerc cookies. They have the Shadow de Front Frontenac on them in Quebec City. Best cookies you can buy, and they're like $2. <laughs> hi, Lisa. Hi, Monica. Hello, hello. We love it. We love it. Does everyone have their snacks? Are we ready to get this party started? Okay. So as I mentioned, we are going to be watching a couple of videos from Marie Forleo, specifically videos that are teaching us how to get rich, teaching us how to attract more abundance into our lives, teaching us how to manifest, if you will. So really excited about that. This came up because someone actually requested that I do a deep dive on her and she came up in the, um, the act art of living, art of grifting, whatever that conference was a few weeks ago that we watched. And I figured, you know what, why not? She posts videos on her YouTube channel all the time. I think one video we're going to watch is like seven years old. And then the other one is much more recent. It's from like two weeks ago. So either way, it should be a good ride. Sorry, she is talking to me in the background. Um, but first, we are going to do a, a little bit of an introduction in terms of who she is and what she is, what she is. I don't know what I'm saying. Hillary says, headed to bed, popping in to say hi. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you on the replay. And if you are watching this on the replay, hello, hello. Okay. Monica says, do enlighten me, Miss Forleo. Oh, she will. Don't you worry. Just wait. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And we'll just run through a quick little introduction for those of you who are new. AJ is saying good because I don't know who this person is. Perfect. Welcome. And if this is your first stream, welcome as well. I know I have a ton of new followers. Thank you so much. Um, or I guess here on YouTube, we call them subscribers. Um, appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. So welcome to the party. We essentially hang out on the internet. We watch videos. We snark on people. And we're doing it all in the name of consumer protection. So really just trying to help people not get scammed. And we're going to sort of poke some holes in the theories of some of these people on the internet with large platforms. So this is Marie Forleo. Marie Forleo uh, considers herself to be an entrepreneur, a speaker, a writer, dedicated to helping you create a business and life that you love. Same story we've heard over and over again. So born and raised Jersey girl with nothing more than passion, a laptop, and a dream. I'm proud to have created a digital empire that touches millions. Why do all of these people sound the exact same. Can someone let me know in the comments? If you've watched my content, you know I talk about this all the time, but it's copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. I saw this person doing this thing, so I'm doing this thing too. So annoying. Through our award-winning show, Marie TV, which is the show we're going to be watching today, we have two videos to get through, um, and the Marie Forleo podcast, world-class online trainings, number one New York Times bestselling book. They're all New York Times bestselling authors, authors, I swear. And an audience in 195 countries. I help people like you dream big and take meaningful action. 
In fact, here are a few ways I can help. And then she is just like, blah, blah, blah. Let me pump your tires. So this for you page or for you about page isn't really what I was hoping. I was kind of hoping it would explain who she is. Um, let's see. I wasn't born knowing how to do any of this. It wasn't fancy degrees or family money or connections that landed me on Oprah's stage or the cover of success magazine. In fact, I was in debt when I started out. Of course you were in debt because they're all in debt every time they get started. I freaking hate it here. Okay. Let me just catch up on the comments. What was she a fitness instructor? I didn't know that. That's news to me. I knew she was a bartender. And I think she was like a nanny at some point. This is wild. I know we talk about it, but can't remember exactly why they charge a number with. Okay. Um, I don't know the pricing to be anything to do with religious reasons from like a, uh, a psychological perspective in marketing. It is. It essentially creates this like facade in our brains that the product is cheaper than it is. So that's why you see a lot of the times they'll do it like instead of charging $100, they'll charge $97 or sometimes $99 because psychologically your brain like tricks you into thinking that it's cheaper than it is. Hi, Daisy Scrunchies. Welcome, welcome. Okay, sorry. I derailed that a little bit. So essentially Marie For Forleo claims to be no one special. She was just a New Jersey girl living in a modest home with plastic covered couches. She wrote a book called Everything is Figure Outable. I don't remember when it came out. I'm going to guess it was like around the Rachel Hollis same time frame, like 2014, maybe. Um, and basically, she has this idea that like every problem in life can be figured out. And so as far as I know, here we go. After several failed attempts at corporate jobs and a lot of angst trying to choose just one thing to be in life, I realized my unusual combination of interests and skills was a strength, not a liability. So I gave up the security of the nine to five, began bartending and waiting tables and doing multiple odd jobs to keep a roof over my head while slowly building a coaching business from the ground up. I later coined the term multi-passionate entrepreneur because I didn't and never will fit into a conventional box. And so it's important to bring this up because she is not someone who had a business and then became a business coach. Like we see time and time again, she decided she didn't like her job. So she quit her job and became a coach. Uh, Hillary's right. Any of the angel pricing. So anytime you see like 333, 444, 222, 777, 666. Just kidding. You wouldn't see 666. Um, any of those repetitive numbers, those are definitely um, like the woo-woo crowd for sure. Yes. Okay. Let me um, switch cameras and then we will get into what's next. So hopefully I can figure this out. Aha. No, it's still flashing. I think that's going to be really annoying. It's going to flash this battery on the screen the entire time I stream. So if you guys don't care, I'm just going to switch back to my laptop. <laughs> And next time I will have the foresight to charge my battery and perhaps even invest in myself and invest in a second battery. <laughs> exactly. DC's technical difficulties are contagious and I have caught them. And so I blame her. <laughs> okay. Luckily, this camera is 1080p, so the quality should be okay if it looks like a butt. Let me know and I have another webcam I can switch to. Okay, so let's bring it back to this conversation. So Marie Forleo, former like corporate dropout, we'll call her, turned business coach. I found a thread on Reddit that kind of speaks to this a little bit more. So we'll take a look at that as well. And I think that just kind of gives you a little bit more context. Hello, hello, DC. What is up? What is up? So this Reddit post was posted in the self-help uh, subreddit, and it says the truth about Marie Forleo and her new book, Everything is Figure Outable. You can tell she's been telling these stories that have a little bit of truth to them, but never really gets the courage to just say, actually, I didn't get past my internship on Wall Street, 
And I realized this life coaching thing was essentially what I was doing as a bartender and part-time aerobics teacher. So she never finished her Wall Street internship is what I'm taking from this. It would be more powerful if she just told it straight and owned that it was her normal duration of time finding her thing and that once she found it, she consumed every piece of literature from people like Oprah, Tony Robbins, and an extensive and ever-growing list to grow into as an expert of a life coach. So what this individual is suggesting is the same thing again that we see over and over is these people with no expertise, no experience, feeling lost in life, feeling like they don't know what they're doing, reading a few self-help books, and deciding to call themselves a life coach. Hello, hello. If you are just jumping on, hi, Lori. Hi, DC. Hi, Mr. Ranger Lab. We love it. Um, How do you spell it? I think you spell it exactly like you did. Figure out a bowl. She basically took the term figure out, smushed it together, and then put a bowl on the end. Created her own dictionary. Okay. Her behavior at the book tour event in London was strange as well. She's a master marketer. I think she summarized a lot of other teachings and thoughts into her own format as always. Credit where it is due. It's okay. And she's done the work to get here. Just a shame she lies so much to inflate her achievements. Again, this person is alluding to these like rags to riches stories that we see over and over again. So then they came back and they updated the post. They said, I've just finished the book. As a longtime follower, I need to blow the whistle. There are numerous things that are no longer matching up through the years. Marie has given snippets of information such as she said she had a great career on wall street, which she left to follow her passion as a Nike elite dancer while she bartended. Then she said she worked for gourmet magazine. Now in the book, she changed it to say she was a trading assistant who left pretty early on. And she mentions not gourmet magazine, but now Vogue. She is not certified in life coaching. Not that it matters, honestly. She was also focused on relationships only for a long time. So I guess one piece that I missed is that she started as like a relationship coach. So before she became Marie Forleo with B-School and all of these other courses that she offers, she identified as a relationship coach. Her first book was about making men want you. And she also has a regular event called Rich, Happy, and Hot. It seems that B-School, which is her version, and this is what she calls it, it's her version of an MBA, which we'll get into that. It seems B-School was the brainchild of Laura Roeder and not Marie. I don't know who that is. If anyone knows who that is, let me know in the comments. I found extensive evidence online, complete with photos and old blogs. She never, ever, ever coached on business, and it's clear she hired a consultant to write B-School into what it is today. Lastly, there is a huge amount of evidence online if you spend an hour on Google. She shot her own workout DVD, which is what Monica was referring to, which she marketed online. Honestly, there's so much video and other coverage online from her own posts and videos that just no longer line up with what the book now says. None of this is even acknowledged. I'm shaking with anger. This ain't right. Okay. So... Let's come back together. I know some of you said you didn't know who Marie Forleo is. I'm not really sure if that painted a clear picture, but to give the like cliff notes summary, she worked in corporate for who knows how long, left corporate, became a bartender, tried to follow her dreams as a dancer, decided she wanted to be a life coach, then became a business coach, launched her own course called B School, which I will pull up on the screen here. And it's essentially for new business owners looking to learn how to grow their business. She charges $2,000 US, so about $2,500 Canadian. And apparently she has an affiliate program wherein if I was a student in B school and I referred you into the program, I would get $1,000 for that referral. So B-School is a four-week interactive video-based training program. It used to be eight weeks. And if you watch my video on Brooke Castillo that I posted the other day about the life coaching school, we saw the same thing. So what was originally a six-month program is now shortened to three months and twice the price. So anyways, just very weird to me. It teaches smart, effective online marketing strategies to business owners who want more sales, more impact from their online presence. Whether you're new to business or established and ready to grow, B-School will challenge you to execute at your highest. From the reading I have done on Reddit mostly, 
most of the students that have written reviews are saying it's not worth the money. It's very fluffy. Are we surprised? <laughs> Most people are saying you'd be better off spending $2,000 to take like a, a business course at a university or find a course somewhere else on the internet. That's like $50. Can those jobs be verified? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's somewhere on the internet. Again, this was just what I came up with in like 30 minutes of searching. I'm sure there has to be someone on the internet who has done like a full backstory on her life and can give us the deets. Yeah, I don't I don't like the whole making men want you. Yeah, I'm right there with you. So let's just give this a quick scroll. I don't think yeah, the prices aren't listed here. The prices I just shared were what I heard from Reddit. So hopefully people on the internet aren't lying to me. But they've had over I think she has it. Yeah, 80,000 students. So you do the math. 2000 people times 80,000. Oh, yeah, here we go. 19, uh, 1,999. So there it is, Monica, this like trickery because $1,999 sounds cheaper than 2000 or they offer a 12 month payment plan of 199 us. Now I did read something interesting on the internet that apparently in multiple States in the U S offering a payment plan where the purchaser has to end up paying more in the long run is actually illegal. And I don't know if that's true. I read it on the internet and I'm going to do some research on it because again, if you've watched any of my content, you know that I don't believe in having a payment plan if you're not doing it for the reason of accessibility and just charging the same price, but allowing people to pay it over a longer period of time. People have disagreed with me in the comments before, and that's okay if you see it differently than I do. But for me, the only reason I charge more or I allow my clients to have a payment plan is to make my programs accessible. And if I am charging them more in the long run for them to have an accessible payment plan, I am defeating the purpose of making it more accessible. So um, that's my thoughts on that. And if anyone knows the legalities of the U S and whether or not that is illegal in certain States, please let me know because we see all of these coaches doing it. And when I read that, I thought, Hmm, very, very interesting. Hello, hello. Reaction Therapy says, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Spend half of that on a licensed therapist. Absolutely, we agree. And if you're not following Reaction Therapy, you absolutely should be. Let me actually give a second here. I'm going to drop DC's link in the chat as well. She's so much better at this than me. I'm like so scatterbrained. So there's DC's and then here is Reaction Therapy. So reaction therapy is a licensed therapist. Can you believe it? Someone with actual credentials who is qualified to be talking about these things. Super, super helpful resource to have. Oh my goodness. Am I being rated? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Thank you everyone who's hopping on from JJ's stream. I appreciate that so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will drop those two links again a little bit later. So if you're not already following DC, you're not already following reaction therapy, you absolutely should. And I will also pull up uh, JJ's link in the chat as well. So welcome everyone who just hopped over from Julie Joe. If you are here to stay, we are just kind of doing a little bit of a run through of who Marie Forleo is um, before we jump into the video. Yes, you spy a plushy tower. Um, so my partner is a co-founder of the company called Makeship. This isn't sponsored. Uh, Makeship.com. They sell plushies for YouTubers, influencers, video game studios. Um, and so we have a massive plushie collection, much to my disdain. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I saw Hillary had a comment and I just want to scroll back and see what she is saying. So here's my theory. People now join B school just to get access to that sweet affiliate program and make more money recruiting than they would in their actual business. I absolutely agree with this theory. And that was why I brought it up. So for those of you that are just jumping on, Marie Forleo has a program. It's called B school. She calls it a alternative to an MBA, which I think is complete BS. It teaches people apparently how to start a business and it's $2,000. 
if you are someone who has taken B school, you then are able to get a ref an affiliate link where you can recruit other people to take B school of which you receive a thousand dollars of their tuition. So you could get a return on your investment by just recruiting two people and you could potentially build an entire business out of recruiting people into the school. So I absolutely stand behind that theory, Hillary, and I totally agree. Maggie says, oh no, B-School. I remember the frenzy of the open doors of that when I used to be in the online. Exactly. Same. I remember having a client of mine years ago who asked me like, I'm thinking about taking B-School. Like, what do you think about it? And at that time I was like, I don't know, <laughs> but I don't think it was $2,000. I think it was cheaper back then, but maybe I'm confused. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm really excited to learn more about her. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So we are going to be watching a couple of videos of hers today. Business school MLM, a thousand percent. Eliza says sounds MLM. You guys are absolutely correct. That is the vibes it's giving me as well. Yeah. She's in with the spiritual community. She's also tight with like Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi. If any of you watched either mine or Kia's coverage of the art of living video, she was in on that. She did like a whole segment in there. She's a grifter in my opinion. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop sharing this screen now. So everyone who's just jumping on, hello. Thank you for coming on. Um, I've already done this earlier in the video, but I apologize for the video quality. My camera died. So we're using our built-in camera. We're trying our best. Okay. Um, we are talking about Marie Forleo today. If you're new here, Marie Forleo, 30 second cliff notes. Used to work as a trader's assistant on Wall Street for a brief period of time, nine to five grinder, quit her job, became a bartender, became a life coach, now is a business expert apparently, um, and has essentially built an empire. I will say this woman is incredibly skilled at marketing. She knows how to position herself well in the market. Um, and today she's going to teach us how to have better money habits and make financial success, build financial freedom. So prepare to get rich. <laughs> how is she giving advice on how to make money on a business when she is not making money on her business? She is making money on her coaching unless her coaching is her actual business. Exactly. So this is the piece that really doesn't sit well with me when it comes to her business practice as a whole is it's the same thing we see across the coaching industry. People with no experience deciding they're interested in coaching about a particular topic and then becoming a coach in that particular topic. So again, my opinion, my thoughts based on my experience, but I don't like it. Um, I'm not sure if Jesse Lee Ward offers an affiliate commission for her program. Uh, if anyone knows, you can type that in the chat and let me know. Long live the technical difficulties club. Honestly, it's true. Yes. So for those of you that are just listening, Alexis says, covering another grifter, she's charismatic as hell, but very little substance. Absolutely. And you will see this in the videos we're going to watch. I say that we're like 30 minutes in. We haven't watched anything. I'm so sorry. Um, very charismatic. She speaks very clearly. She is like quite entertaining to watch. It's easy to sit and listen to her. And she comes off as like very relatable. But uh, again, where's the substance? That's what I want to know. Eliza, I would hazard to guess that it does involve changing your beliefs and getting rid of your scarcity mindset, but we're about to find out. <laughs> Having a bartender experience does not make you a business expert. You are correct. Okay. So we're going to start with a video that she posted seven years ago. Um, and I skipped ahead a little bit just because there's what I'm assuming is going to be copyrighted music. Um, so hopefully you guys can see that looks good. Um, so we're going to watch this first. I'll probably pause it periodically, share my thoughts, and uh, let's figure out the two weird money habits that tune our brain into an abundance mindset. Buckle up. Leo, and you are watching Marie TV, the place to be if you want to create a business and a life that you love. Something happened a few weeks ago that made me realize that I have some weird little rituals around money. In fact, the next time I saw my team, I actually asked them, I said, does anyone else do this thing? And it sparked a really great discussion. 
Now, money is a super hot button topic. I don't think I've ever met anyone who doesn't have a complex and sometimes tumultuous relationship with it, myself included. However, I realized that over the years, some of my weird little money rituals have actually made a huge positive difference in how I feel and how I act around money. Now, a lot of these took root when I was having a really hard time financially, when money terrified me because I was crazy in debt and anytime I opened my checkbook, I was filled with so much anxiety, I could barely breathe. Okay, I'm not saying she didn't have this experience, but I just want to reiterate the fact that we see so many of these people in this space sharing stories like this. And I wholeheartedly believe it's to like come across as relatable. Again, if you've watched any of my content, you know, I talk about this a lot, like the the goal of these coaches, whether they are conscious of it or not, is to take advantage of vulnerable people. And so they share these stories, the rags to riches stories, like Monica's saying, to enable people in their audience to think like, oh my God, she was in the exact position I'm in. Therefore, I'm going to listen to what she has to say because if she got out of it, I can get out of it too. And I'll read through the rest of the comments once I'm done. And I believe that these weird little money habits have helped train my brain to actually invite more of it in, to appreciate what I have, and to give more away. So okay, but appreciation isn't going to help me if I'm literally so broke I can't pay my bills. Today, I want to share two of my weird little money rituals with you that you might want to try out for yourself. Weird money ritual number one, never say no to honest money. So here's what I mean by that. The other day, I was walking home from a video shoot right here in New York City, and I have to say I was pretty fried. I was like toast. My head was down. I had this huge bag on my shoulder, and I'm walking, and I noticed a penny. Now, it didn't register at first, and I walked a few steps more, and then I said, whoa, wait, that was a penny back there. So I turned around and I went back and I picked it up. Now I have to be honest, part of me feels like I should be embarrassed or, you know, I'm picking up money off the street. Isn't that pathetic? But then, thank goodness, the wiser part of me said, screw that, that's money. I'm going to pick it up. That's because I have a little pact with myself. I never say no to honest money. And that includes... All right, who's taking notes? Pick up pennies off the street. Step number one to getting rich, pick up pennies off the street. Okay? Includes Honest Abe. I see you, girl. You're trying to pick me up. I like it. I am not too good to pick up a penny or a nickel or a dime or whatever off the ground. And whenever I notice money just laying there, I pick it up and I say, thank you. This is awesome. For me, it's a reminder that the universe is always there to give me whatever I need. And all it takes for me is to be present, to keep my eyes open, and to not be too good for the little things, for, you know, the small blessings. So pick up those pennies because that's how you're going to get rich. I think there's also something really humbling about honoring that loose change because, you know, about a billion people in this world live on less than $1.25 a day. So to just walk past money, no matter what the amount, seems incredibly arrogant and disrespectful. So you- Coming from me, who has made millions by exploiting vulnerable people. You may want to try this one out for yourself. Never say no to honest money. If you see loose change, scoop it up and say, thank you. Weird money ritual number two, keep your money tight and right. Meaning, I like to keep my physical money really tidy and organized. Now, you may have heard me talk about how I used to literally wash and iron my money back when I was a kid. You heard of money laundering? This was the real deal. Now, as an adult, I no longer do that. But this habit is something I probably picked up from all my years working in restaurants, specifically as a bartender. 
I never crumple my money. I always got to have the bills facing in the same way. I have all my fives together, my tens together, my ones together. They are all organized and neat and they lie flat in my wallet. You might think this sounds silly, but for me, keeping my money tight and right is a sign of reverence and respect. Respect for myself, for the money that comes into my life, and for the money that flows out of my life. I feel like I'm being a good steward of it for the time that it's with me. This one has zero embarrassment factor since you get to do it in private, and I highly encourage you to give it a go. Now these two money rituals are super simple, but I'd encourage you to try them and at least see if they make a difference in your life. And if you haven't seen our other episode on six money mindset shifts that pay off huge, you may want to check that one out too. It's really good. Let's wrap this up with a tweetable. What is a tweetable? I'm turning the sound off because I don't me it's attracted to respect oh frig off we're not watching that (laughs) stupid affirmations okay sorry i'm gonna get caught up on your comments let me know what you thought about that video in the comments because to me big yikes big yikes okay we're i'm way back i'm way behind (laughs) Even if she did have the experience, doesn't mean everyone's going to be able to get where she is. Exactly. It's a false facade. They share this story to make you feel like they can help solve your problems. Thank you. And thank you to JJ for sending everyone here. I think she's live on Instagram right now. Um, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What about dishonest money? That's what I was wondering. If someone, like, what would we consider dishonest money? but I'll take it unless I have to steal it from someone that I'm not interested. Good evening. Oh, thank you. I got my hair done today. So it's much blonder than it was before, but I'm also very hot right now. So it's a little frizzy, but we're trying our best. Appreciate you for jumping on. Definitely guilty of following people. Okay, let's talk about this. So AJ is saying, I'm definitely guilty of following people like this in the past. They for sure prey on the vulnerable. 100% for those of you that are new to my channel I know I've gotten quite a few new subscribers in the past few days I used to be one of these people I used to think I was a life coach I used to share inspirational posts on Instagram every day like I really thought I was doing something and so there's no shame in anyone who used to like follow these people believe in these people like worship everything they said that was me a good like five years ago. So I totally can relate. Does she also keep it if she finds someone drops their wallet? I don't know. You you can draw your own conclusions. I wouldn't put it past her. It's honest money. (laughs) Picking pennies up off the street. Got it. Yeah, in Canada, we don't have pennies. So (laughs) pennies are worthless here. (laughs) Exactly. We do not have them, so I'm not going to waste my time picking them up. I flip pennies over if it's tails up. Maybe that's why I'm broke. Oh, you guys are funny. Yeah, why don't you leave the money there for people who need it? That's kind of what I was thinking is like she's going on about like the way I make money is like I'll take any money I can find. But why don't you leave it for someone who could actually use it? I mean, or needs it more than you do since you're already rich. Why don't you let the rest of us get rich too, you know? (laughs) I've been picking up pennies my whole life. I'm at about $5 now. I love it. Oh, that's fun. I live at the U.S.-Canada border in Michigan. We still use Canadian pennies mixed in with our U.S. ones. I remember too, like even in Canada, like if I have an American nickel or a dime or anything, most stores will still take them at face value. Okay, interesting. So Odds is saying, I do agree in a sense with what she is saying. So if you want to elaborate on that in the comments, I would love to hear your perspective.
I used to say, oh, no, right away when someone offered lunch or something. But now I like the practice of inviting more money in. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I could see that like being um, more willing to take offers from other people. Yeah. We discussed this in the intro. She wrote a book. She has an online course and a bunch of other stuff, too. Sorry, still scrolling, still scrolling. For sure. So odds is saying as a person who values some of this, you guys are a pretty tough crowd. Yeah. So I, again, am coming from the perspective of someone who is deep in this industry. I've spent thousands of dollars on these courses and um, I would encourage you to watch some of the pre-filmed content on my channel. I feel like I'm a lot more articulate when I sit down and have like a script that I'm reading. Um, but I debunk a lot of the stuff that goes on here just because I do think that a lot of people like Marie Forleo, again, is just an example of many of these people are incredibly dangerous and the things that they do are financially harmful to the majority of people. But again, I don't, if you, if this is something that you believe in and it makes you feel better about your life, you are free to do as you please. I just have significantly distanced myself from the self-help industry because in my opinion, it can become a very toxic place to be. What is the miraculous formula to make me rich? Still waiting to figure that out. Apparently, it's pick up pennies. And I already forgot what the second tip was. Oh, organize your money. I don't even carry cash ever anymore. So I literally have a $5 bill and it looks like this. So Marie Forleo would be very disappointed in me. <laughs> Because it's shoved into a cup holder with a bunch of pens. <laughs> is she involved in an MLM? No. So those of you that jumped over from uh, JJ's channel, I cover business coaches. So particularly people in the business coaching, life coaching, spiritual coaching industry. Most specifically, the coaches who coach other coaches to coach other coaches. So we talk a lot about how a lot of these people in the personal development self-help space don't actually teach things of significant value. This is coming from someone who has owned my own business for over five years now. Um, and a lot of these coaches just coach other coaches on how to coach other coaches, having never run an actual business of any sort. And so we debunk a lot of the like lack of substance. So Marie Forleo was never in an MLM. She's probably talked at MLM conferences as they all do, but uh, not, not an MLM herself. Although we have determined that her B-School course is somewhat of an MLM. So there's that. <gasps> Keeping your money in a specific way is just preference or habit. How you store it isn't going to make it magically appear. Thank you for pointing this out, Elizabeth. 1000% agree. I understand the importance of like appreciating money, being grateful for the things that you have. But I don't personally believe that keeping my $20 bills in a straight line is going to all of a sudden make more $20 bills appear. And that's kind of like the, 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 the knowledge gap that's like missing for me. I can't make that connection that these people tend to. If you win the lottery, congrats. Enjoy it. Nothing wrong with that for sure. So Maggie is saying the problem is not necessarily what she or people like her is saying. It's the exploitation of vulnerable people. Thank you. That's exactly it. It's that they sell things under the guise of having this like magical formula that's going to transform your life. And then what do you know? They don't. <laughs> okay. There's a funny story from behind the scenes of the X-Files, which was shot in Vancouver. They needed a $20 bill as a prop. They had to shake down the crew for American currency. Oh, no. <gasps> It's a lot of woo-woo BS. I will agree with that. Yes. So odds, I would encourage you to go back to the beginning of this video, maybe, because I read some reviews on Reddit. Um, but the general consensus from many of the students who have paid for the course is that for the $2,000 that she charges for it, it's not worth it. Um, and this is coming from someone, again, I sell a course that teaches Canadians how to start a business. I charge $47, $27 if you join my email list. 
to charge $2,000 for rudimentary basic business advice from someone who has never owned an actual business outside of coaching, to me, seems very problematic. Yeah, absolutely. I would encourage you, if you have some time, go through my channel. I have playlists with like 50 different videos. You can kind of pick and choose. I also do videos that sort of discuss the crossover between MLMs, cults, and the coaching industry. A lot of the commonalities that we see amongst those. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts on that. I did cover the art of living. If you go under my live video tabs, you will see it. It was like maybe 10 videos ago. Look for a thumbnail that says the art of grifting. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'm so far behind in the comments. <laughs> Therapist. Thank you. Okay. So reaction therapy is saying therapists don't sell packages. They help clients with what they need help with. This type of person sells a package, whether you need it or whether you'd even be good at it. Thank you for bringing this up because this is something, again, we see in the coaching industry is I'm actually going to steal this thought because this is, a, this is a good one. We see people, and I'm not saying Marie Forleo does this, but a lot of these coaches will sell like a six month coaching mastermind or a one year coaching program. And they convince you that it's the financial commitment that's going to bring you success. So you've committed to me for a year now, you've paid me $20,000, therefore you're going to be successful. When in any other professional practice, you diagnose as you go. So I go see my therapist on Thursday. He's going to tell me, okay, we should probably meet next week. Or he's going to say, okay, you're probably good for a couple weeks. It's not Danielle pay six months in advance and then we'll, we'll assess you at the end. I actually went to a chiropractor once that tried to do that to me. And I was like, something smells fishy here. How are you going to know that my back still hurts in six months? I'm not paying up front. <laughs> I will repeat it to the end of time. Like Julie said, please, there is nothing wrong with your mindset. There never was no need to change it to fit this MLM rhetoric or your coaches. Exactly. Beyond, we are trying our best to quantum visualize wealth into our mind sphere on a spirit walk. Let's all do it together. Quantum manifestation is in session. <laughs> Some people take these kinds of ideas and it can be very damaging to their mental health. Lots of victim blaming, spiritual bypassing and toxic positivity. Exactly. Thank you, Maggie. I would love to see a follow-up study on the long-term results of people who pay this much money to become a coach. Are there any studies? I don't think there's any formal studies. I just find, and you could too, pages and pages of people on Reddit leaving reviews. Literally anytime I want to make a video about a particular person, I will just go on Google and type in name of the person, Reddit, and see. So like when I made my Brooke Castillo video the other day, I looked Brooke Castillo, Life Coach School, Reddit, and that's where you get all the good and all the bad. <laughs> okay, Anthony says, my friend was a victim of these fake coaches, a YouTube coach actually to grow his channel. They basically took $4,000 and said, I can't help your niche. Exactly. And it's just like, it's so sad. And we see this in business all the time too. Again, as someone, so for context, those of you that don't know me, I owned a yoga studio for four years and I grew that to be like the number one rated yoga studio in the area that I lived in. I had my own yoga TV show for three seasons. It was like a whole thing. And I had hired a coach at the beginning of that whole experience who had told me to quit teaching yoga and start coaching other people on how to start a yoga business before I had reached that level of success. I was literally less than a year into my business. I was making maybe like $20,000 at that time. And she was telling me, stop teaching yoga, start teaching other people how to become yoga teachers, not even yoga teachers, but how to own a yoga business. And I was like, I'm not even qualified lady. Like, what are you saying? But that's how I would reach, you know, 10 K months. So ridiculous. Yeah, I paid $4,500 for my first coach. And then my second coach was $200 a month US and I'm in Canada. So that was like $250, $300. It was a lot of money. I've spent well over $5,000, I would say, which is why I make the content that I make. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Elizabeth, it's under the live tab. I love recognizing names in the chat from other. Yeah, exactly. It's the, a lot of the same people. I appreciate you all for being here. Super excited. And I'm sorry that I'm chatting so much. <laughs> Thank you for hopping on, Maggie. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a good sleep if you're still on here. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, if I ask, 
if you can pay a coach so much money to learn how to make money, it does not make sense. You are already making money, but giving it to a coach. Exactly. And that's why the, that's why it annoys me so much. It's because no real value is being generated. Like when I own a regular business, let's say I have a coffee shop and you come in and you buy your coffee. I get to give you the coffee. The value that I added to your life is that you got the product that you were promised, you know, maybe it made your day a little bit better. And at the end of the day, you are given something in exchange for the money you're giving me. When I'm a coach who coaches you to coach someone else, we're not actually exchanging any value. You're giving me so that I can teach you how to get someone else to give you money to then convince someone else to give them money. And it just like continues the chain with no real value being generated. Does that make sense? We don't show up here for the chatting. We came here for the scams. Well, hopefully my rambling is giving you a little bit more insight into what the scams actually look like. <gasps> hello, hello, hello. Okay, we will get into video number two. So this video is titled, Want Financial Freedom and Abundance? Then Say This Daily. So this should be a good one, my friends. <laughs> And welcome to another episode of the Marie Forleo podcast and Marie TV, the place to be. So this one is from like two weeks ago. So it's very recent. To create a business and life you love. So I want to talk to you about what's been happening these past few weeks. So I've gone on a bunch of different podcasts. It's been super fun. I actually went out to LA. I did uh, Almost 30 with Krista and Lindsay again. I did the Dream Bigger podcast with Safat. I also did the Erica Taught Me podcast here in New York. And then I also did my friend Katrina Scott podcast called Live Beautifully. And we did that in New York too. So here's what's interesting. I did not plan on talking about money on any of these shows, but inevitably it wound up coming up again and again and again. It was so weird. It was kind of mind blowing. I'm like, why is this happening? And in every instance, I found myself very spontaneously and very passionately talking about my own money journey and how my relationship with money has transformed over the course of my life and career. It's a topic that I'm super passionate about, but I really don't feel like I've talked about it enough lately. And I found that when I was talking about my journey, I kept sharing the phrase that has literally transformed my life in so many ways as it relates to money. So I kept saying, I love money. And I found that when I said that on these shows and all the people that had me on as their guest, I would like watch them initially, like their eyes would just pop out of their head and they're like, oh my gosh, Murray, what does that mean? And I started sharing how when I discovered the possibility that you could pour the energy of love on your money life, it completely transformed so much for me. It helped me get myself out of literally tens and tens of thousands of dollars in debt. It helped me heal all this kind of effed up stuff I had in myself that I had learned from family and society and culture and all these different things about scarcity and not enoughness, including myself. And ultimately, that one little phrase helped me create results in my financial life that were so far beyond anything I could have ever dreamed of as a kid or even as a young adult. So the reason I'm bringing this up to you today is that first of all, I think it's important that we talk about money. It is such a huge topic in all of our lives. It influences every aspect of how we live, how we work, how we think, how we behave in our jobs, our careers, our families, everything. And it's often, sadly, this source of tremendous anxiety and pain and shame. And it's just an area of our lives that from what I've discovered for myself and from what I've witnessed and people I've worked with and even friends and colleagues, it can just be really, really painful. Now, here's the good news. I've learned in my own journey, it does not have to be that way. And in fact, for the past eight or nine years, I have been marinating on this possibility of doing a program around money, a training specifically to help people heal themselves and free themselves of a lot of the pain and the shame and anxiety around it so they can. Okay, we're gonna stop this right here. Um, couple things that I want to address. First one being that if you have a problematic relationship with money to the point where you perhaps suffer from things like impulse spending, out of control debt, any kind of relationship with money as a result of your past experiences 
that cause you to be unable to sort of self-regulate, go to therapy, do yourself a favor, get in touch with a professional. This is the part that really irritates me for lack of a better term is her telling this story of I was once in position ABC. Maybe you feel that way. Now I'm putting together this magic solution again that's going to help you recover from that issue. And the people she's targeting are the ones who are in the most vulnerable positions, often financial disparity or um, personal distress and should be seeking professional help, not just like an armchair expert. Sorry, I'm just catching up on the comments again. What do we know? Katie, I don't know if you're still here, but hello. Um, Never heard of any of these podcasts. You know what? Honestly, the grift is so big that uh, it's hard to keep up. What is your actual business outside of coaching? She doesn't have one. That's the thing. She is an expert marketer. I said, again, I will give her that. But this to me is like crossing boundaries that should um, exist. Yes, in case you missed it. Eliza, that's what she said. She learned one phrase and it changed her ability to make money. So we love that for her. Is she going to tell us the magic tip? I don't know. I'm still waiting, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're not done. This is only halfway through the video. I just had to stop because I wanted to make this point that if you are someone who is struggling and you're in a vulnerable position, particularly when it comes to money, I really would suggest you seek out professional help. Um, it just, it really irks me. Why did you have to use the word marinating? I would like to know. So I want to address this comment. So Danielle is saying the audience of these coaches is those who are new in an MLM and it's for what, and it's looking for what they're doing wrong. So actually the people that most of the people I cover on my channel don't target people in MLMs. When I hired a coach, I was not in an MLM. I had been approached to join an MLM. MLM has never like appealed to me. I've never been in an MLM. The people that these people target are often ones that are in nine to five jobs that they don't like. They feel like they have some like greater purpose that they're supposed to be fulfilling. Oftentimes they're people who are high achievers who um, enjoy like giving back to people. And then they kind of like, wrangle them in under the guise that they're going to teach them how to build a business where they're able to do all those things. They're able to help people. They're able to exercise their ability to be an overachiever, to build a successful business as an entrepreneur, to be self-employed, etc. Like I never wanted to be a business owner when I decided to get into coaching. I just wanted to help people. People were coming to me for advice. I thought, you know what, I could turn this into a business. So it's not necessarily people in MLMs that they're targeting. Yes, there are coaches out there that target people in MLMs. But most of the ones I cover on my channel are not targeting people in MLMs. It's like its own MLM in its own realm. It's like a pyramid, a giant pyramid of coaches, coaching coaches. Here's how I got rich. Not spending money on fake coaches. Exactly. Taking my money that I was going to spend on Marie Forleo's B-School and investing it in the S&P 500. <laughs> She is talking and talking, but not giving any tangible advice. Exactly. Let's see what else we have to what else she has to say. I had to take a little detour there. Stay safe, my friends. I did cover Elise Parker very briefly in my video about whether or not life coaching is a scam. If you go to my profile, I believe it's like the third video. Um, yeah. So if you go to my profile, I have my business coaching scam playlist right at the top. And it's the third video in. You'll see Elisa's face in the thumbnail. Um, that's I haven't done like a deep dive specifically into her, but I talk about her and I do a segment on her in that video. They can have freedom and joy, especially around money. And by the way, it's not about how much money you have or how much you earn. It really is a whole transformative process that I've gone through myself. And I feel like there's this possibility for healing for so many of us if we're willing to look at our beliefs and look at our behaviors and start to do things differently, which brings me to what I want to ask you today. So I think one of the first steps in transforming anything is awareness and also starting to talk about things. And so I'm curious about your money beliefs. I'm curious how you feel about money. And specifically, here's what I want to know. 
What's one money belief that keeps you from being, doing, or having what you want in life? Is it a belief that maybe money is the root of all evil, or maybe that, you know what, money is not important, money isn't everything? Is it perhaps that it's not safe for you or spiritual enough for you to be wealthy, like it wouldn't align with your values? Or is it that, you know, money's just really hard to come by or that maybe you're not smart enough or talented enough or capable enough to handle large amounts of it? And there might be so many other beliefs that can come up, but I'm super curious to hear what that belief might be for you. Please leave your answer in the comment below because as I shared, I think talking about it is one of the first steps to healing it and then also just getting comfortable with having these conversations. And of course, you can share as much as you want. Okay. Again, I want to have a conversation about this. Hello, hello, Heather. I dropped Heather's channel in the comments. If you're not following Heather yet, she is an anti-MLM creator and she's Canadian as well. So I love it. Yeah, again, everything that I share here is from like my legitimate long-term experience in this industry. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has, but I just, I see, have seen so many of these coaches like rise and fall and um, I've paid them myself. So I know, I know a thing or two. Let me just say that. <laughs> um, okay. I wanted to talk about what she's going on about right now, because I do think it's important. Um, and there is some validity to this. So again, I don't just come here to snark on the internet and be uh, a troll. I do want to say that there is value in understanding your relationship with money, how you feel about money the things that were sort of ingrained to you as you were a kid growing up and then working to build a like quote unquote healthy relationship with money. I think that's going to look different for everyone in your circumstances. But again, I speak from my own experience. I grew up single parent, three siblings where there was three of us, two siblings and me. <laughs> um, not a lot of money. Obviously I've had a job since I was like 13, you know, paid my way through life, paid my way through university, buying all my own shit from the time that I got my first job. And so I sort of developed these patterns of like always feeling like there was never enough money. And that was something that I had to work through myself over time to understand, you know, there's always ways to make more money. I can figure it out. It's everything is figure outable. Um, but again, it's like it, you do have to take time, I guess is my point, to sit and reflect on like what your relationship is with money and how it impacts your relationships and do the work to figure that out. So I don't want to discredit that. I will give her um, the benefit of the doubt here that that is something that I do think there is value in doing for anyone. Um, but again, if you're in a position where the way you behave around money is impacting your life negatively, that's when you need to consider hiring professional help and not just taking your advice from books that you've read or random people on the internet. Heather covered Tony Robbins today. Okay, I'll have to check out that replay. I would love your input on him as well. He has a membership course costing $97. Okay, I got an ad for that on Instagram today, actually. And I think it was Monica that asked me the other day to cover Tony Robbins. So he's on the top of my list. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get to that. The belief I have to pay back my student loans is what's keeping me from being rich. I love it. The belief I need to buy my bunny... Every treat and toy that she wants keeps me broke. Oh my God. Okay. It's funny story. I was walking Bubba. If you don't know, again, you're new here. Bubba is my dog. He's not in the room right now. But the other day I took him for a walk and there's a pet store down the street that we go to like once a week, whatever, grab kitty litter, grab dog food, whatever. We're walking down the street. He literally dragged me an entire block and they had the door open because it was a nice day, ran straight into the store and sat right where they hand out the treats. And I was like, well, shit, now I got to buy something because you brought me all the way here, man. Ah, brat. Paying bills keeps me from being rich, honestly. Okay, Shelby says, seriously, though, I wish I would have started investing sooner. When you are young, time is on your side when it comes to investing time. Exactly. So things that you learn as you get older, 100%. If you have the means, invest early while you can because <laughs> that compound interest will do you a favor. These therapists, these coaches act like therapists trying to heal and diagnose strangers. They're basically practicing without a, exactly. I would like to know how it's allowed. Honestly, how can we take them down? <laughs> okay. Danielle is replying. So there are 
coaches just because how, yeah. So most coaches, again, I would probably guess like 90% of people who are coaches aren't associated with MLMs. They are just coaching to coach coaches. Anyone who is like a reputable professional, in my opinion, won't call themselves a coach. So anyone who has the title of coach is usually a red flag. I take this again from my own experience. I offer consulting and marketing. I call myself a marketing consultant. I don't call myself a marketing coach. Um, and so most people with legitimate experience and expertise will call themselves, you know, a specialist, an expert, a consultant, like those kind of words. Coach, mm, red flag, run away, in my opinion. The daddy of self-help, Tony. Exactly. Everyone's favorite grifter. Honestly, he's the OG. For sure. I used to work at Petco in downtown Chicago, and people used to tell me all the time that their dogs would walk them in the direction. Yeah, exactly. My partner and I are pretty sure that it's like a sales tactic, obviously. So you train the dogs to get to like want to come to the store. <laughs> Okay, sorry, that's enough rambling about dogs. We'll get back to the rest of this video. <laughs> now, second, since this is a topic that seems to keep coming up again and again, for me, what I've noticed in my life is I feel like I'm getting that cosmic call to finally get this money project that I've been thinking about and, and dreaming about for so long. I want to get it into my project pipeline. So if you're willing and if you're interested in this topic, I've got a few more money questions I would love your input on. I can't wait. So I put together a short list of questions. If you go to goodmoneyquestions.com, that's goodmoneyquestions.com, um, that'll help you and I start a conversation about this because I would love to make you a part of this project and just um, understand more of, of what you want and need because having your perspective, A, it's going to personally mean the world to me. I love staying connected with you. And B, it's going to help me make sure that I'm focusing my efforts and my research on the aspects of money that would actually be the most impactful and supportive for you. And now finally, if you want to get started on transforming your relationship with money right now, here is an invitation for you, right? This is something for you to consider, something for you to ponder as you go out into your world and any time that money comes up as you live your life. So here we go. How might your financial life transform if you poured the energy of love into every part of it. I'm serious, what might shift for you? How would your thoughts or your feelings or your behaviors change if you poured the energy of love into every single part of your money life? When you're paying your bills, when you're buying something from the store, when you're sharing money or lending it or saving it or investing it or thinking about it in any form, really ask yourself that question. And then no matter what comes up, I wanna know the answer. So leave a comment below and let me know. And by the way, I just wanna thank you so much for diving into this topic with me. This is certainly not gonna be the last time I talk about it on the show. I know it can be a really tough and emotional area, which is exactly why I wanna do what I can to help. If I don't know what she means. I have to go back to the question. I already forgot it. How might your financial life transform if you poured the energy of love into every part of it? Okay, so I think what she's saying here is what a lot of these people say, how like every time you spend money or do anything around money, you have to like be thankful for the experience. Um, has anyone read the this book right here? Hold on. I had to Google it. I'll show you the page. <laughs> You are a badass at making money because it's giving me like the same vibes as this book right here. This little self-help book that essentially, um, again, back in the day, five years ago or so, four or five years ago, when I used to be deep into this life coaching, mindset coaching stuff, I thought this book was revolutionary. Now that I have a better perspective on reality... <laughs> I realize it's just a lot of fluff about believe and say thanks to your money and that's how you're going to generate wealth. And I became so wealthy and it's like, wait a minute, what's happening here? Nothing. <laughs> I'm confused. Okay. Again, she was an assistant to a trader. That's her money expertise besides just having it. She built out the Marie TV show with no following, but had a big studio. She was just able to have built. Yeah. Again, I think that, um, okay, sorry, there's a part two. 
She wasn't able to build out the studio based on her success. It was just that she already had money. Okay, I don't know if this is true. But again, I do want to say that she is like a master marketer. And again, I keep saying again, sorry. Many of the coaches that I feature on my channel who have been successful, because we know many people, just like we see in MLM, many people who start coaching businesses end up failing and ditching their coaching businesses, myself included. Um, but the ones that are successful are very good at marketing, at capturing attention, at selling people on this illusion, on this dream. And so I believe that Marie has built this business coaching business, business coaching business is an not an oxymoron, um, under the guise of false promises and the illusion of like, I have the secret to success and here's what you need to do. And because she is very skilled at convincing people that she has the secrets and knows what to do, they are likely to fall prey for it. So again, my opinion, I read the original, you are a badass and got nothing from it. Good, good, good. Glad it wasn't just me. <laughs> Sav Savvy Writes Books has some good coverage. Okay. I think I've watched some of those, actually, now that you bring it up. I'm pretty sure I watched her review of uh, the You Are a Badass. What you just said about the type of person these coaches prey on hits home. About 10 years ago, I was the person you described. I find that I almost go into a trance. Exactly. Lisa, I am right there with you. And that's why I don't want anyone who's watching these videos to like be offended that I'm like shit talking these people that they look up to and that they find value in their work. I more so just encourage you to approach it with a critical eye being someone who, again, six years ago, I was in a nine to five job that I absolutely hated. My job was literally, I worked for a city at uh, in like solid waste. So the landfill and people would call me and complain that their garbage didn't get picked up and they would be like screaming at me. And I'm sitting at my desk thinking, how the flip did I end up in this job? Who cares? Why are you so angry? And so I wanted my out. I wanted to do something that made more of an impact. And so what did I do? I hired a coach. I became a yoga teacher. I became a life coach. I did all of these things thinking that I was going to like find the answer that was going to bring me this secret joy that all these people were promising me. And so I just urge you, if you are someone who is susceptible to listening to these people and taking everything they say at face value to have a critical eye and maybe just question, you know, the validity of what they're saying, what is their actual experience? what why what is their motive behind why they're sharing these things that they're sharing that's a big one too and i guess how are they going to benefit from me like buying into whatever it is they're selling or like whatever narrative they're trying to get me to convince me to believe in okay that was a bit of a sidetrack but <laughs> You Are a Badass was recommended by the director in Color Street for Mindset Reading. Yeah, it's a very popular book in the self-help space. So we see it recommended a lot. I follow a few like top leaders in, in Monet, sorry, and they always recommend it as like a great book. Very popular in the, the MLM space, but personal development, whatever. A lot of these coaches will recommend it as well as like a life-changing book. Do you still have your own yoga spot? No. So for context, um, so I used to live in Ontario, which if you're not familiar with Canadian geography is on like the Eastern side of the country. And so I started my yoga business in 2018 as a mobile service in 2020. I bought a house right before the pandemic. My partner and I, at the time, we converted part of the house into like a private studio. So I was still doing mobile classes where I would do like private yoga at people's houses. Then I had my own studio space where people could come to me. I did that all through the pandemic, after the pandemic. Lots of stuff happened in my personal life. 2020, April of 2022, I decided to break off my engagement, sell my house, close my business, moved across the country. Now I do like full-time content creation. So I do like freelance UGC stuff on TikTok. I do marketing consulting for small businesses. 
And now I'm a talking head on the internet. So um, that's like a little bit of context. So I don't actively teach yoga anymore. I'm still like a licensed yoga teacher, but uh, I don't have a yoga studio anymore. And that's my life story. And I'm going to change it the next time you ask. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was a dig, Emery, because someone in the Reddit forum said she changes her life story every time she t tells it. So there is no answer. Our brains are just designed to desire more. That's the circle of life. Exactly. So don't buy into anyone's five-step formula that costs $10,000. That's the lesson for today, folks. <laughs> yes. No. So I don't coach people um, for context. That is not true. Um, but hopefully my little synopsis there clarifies what I do. That would be awfully hypocritical of me to sit on the internet and snark on coaches and then have a coaching business. <laughs> Her material is exactly what my mom says. So I'm good. I already have a coach. The problem is I don't talk to her anymore because of the brainwashing from her religion. I am so sorry to hear that. Oh my goodness. I'm content with where I'm at. Yeah, I'm just going to be chilling. Honestly, if anyone needs me, um, I'm done with overachieving. I will just be on my couch. Right over there. When we're done here, that's where I'm going. <laughs> Only $99 if you sign up tonight. Exactly. Guys, I'm starting a new mentorship program. It's called Become a Millionaire by Tomorrow. And all you have to do to end to uh, join the membership is pay me $1,000. Go to paypal.com slash pay Danielle Ryan and uh, send me a transfer and I'll let you join. I'll send you my PDF that I created in Microsoft Paint. Um, and we'll get started and by tomorrow you'll be rich. Okay. I'm wondering for people, is it having a nine to five job that isn't desirable or what that the nine to five job is? Okay. Let's have a discussion about this. Cause I would love to hear some of your thoughts in the comments because I have my own thoughts on this. So back when I left my nine to five job and I decided to start my yoga business slash life coaching business, um, I was at that point in time, again, I was 25. So first of all, immature. I would go around spewing this narrative all over social media about how terrible nine to fives were and how you're an idiot if you work a nine to five and entrepreneurship is the best thing that's ever happened. And everyone who's smart will start their own business because who wants to be a slave at a nine to five when you could just be an entrepreneur? Let me tell you now, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I don't think this way anymore. I literally will make videos being like, I don't think people should start businesses. Starting a business is a bad idea. Don't become an entrepreneur unless you absolutely have the right personality for it because it sucks. <laughs> it doesn't suck. There are obviously benefits, but being an entrepreneur, I think, is for like very specific people. And so this narrative that like the nine to five is evil, honestly, I think people just share it because they hear like they're up, I'll call them their upline, but like their coach or whoever is telling them to tell other people that it's like a cult mentality almost, if that makes sense. For me, I'm like, yo, I would love a consistent paycheck every two weeks. Cause this whole, like getting paid a lot of money one day and then none for two weeks really sucks. <laughs> That's like the one thing I'd say that I miss that and my benefits plan, but like I have my partner has benefits at his job. So we're good on that front. But for a few years there, I had to pay for my dentist out of the pocket and it was expensive. <laughs> my interest in MLM slash business coaching scams is their similarity to cults. There's some big news in the cult world. Not sure if it's an aesthetic fit for the channel. For sure. Beyond, have you seen my series? I did a three part series. I think it was three videos where I discuss the commonalities between MLMs, cults, and coaching. Um, I have a couple different um, cult-related videos that I'm working on to come out in the next couple of weeks, um, as in, like, specific leaders in certain cults that I'm going to be discussing. Um, I definitely think it kind of ties into the whole, like, anti-scam commentary space. So send it my way if you want me to have a look at it. 
Thank you so much for being here. And a big shout out to anyone who has subscribed to me in the last week. Um, I've gained like 2000 new subs and I'm super excited about it. So I appreciate all of you. Um, and thank you so much for being here. I love my nine to five. I've had many that I hated though. Exactly. Alexis, I think you're totally right. I think it really just comes down to you like finding the right fit for you. Obviously there are nine to five jobs out there that suck. Obviously there's also some people that don't care what they do for a job. They just want to like go to, go to work, kind of like mentally check out, get their paycheck and go home and enjoy their life at the time when they're not at work. I think that's great. If you can do that. Awesome. If you hate your job, find another one. <laughs> Isn't everything a cult essentially? In a sense, yes. I do believe I am creating my own cult here on YouTube. So welcome. <laughs> some people like their nine to five. Some people don't. Exactly. You can't put everybody on the same boat. A hundred percent. I agree. I love the stability. I love the stability. I need consistency. Exactly. And that's the piece that I think a lot of people who perpetuate this narrative of like forget the nine to five become an entrepreneur da, 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 da. it's like some people prefer to have consistency in their life some people don't want to have a weird work schedule where some days I'm working until what time is it right now almost 8 30 p.m where I live like some people don't want to do that they want to clock out at four and not have to think about work I am thinking about work 24 7 I create endless amounts of content on my phone and my computer and on YouTube and on TikTok and Instagram and whatever. And I'm always thinking of like new content ideas and I'm discussing this and I'm discussing that. And it's like, it doesn't turn off when you own your own business. It doesn't turn off. <laughs> there are some real hallmarks of high control groups that set them apart from just normal organizations. Yeah, for sure. Just because the majority seem to agree about something, does that make it a fact? No, but people believe it to be true. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to get caught up on the comments. Being an entrepreneur is nine to nine. Yeah, 24-7, 365, baby. We are in it to in it. In it to win it, I mean. <laughs> I like nine to five. Mine gave me benefits like medical insurance, et cetera, and retirement. That's the other thing too, is like, obviously I'm in Canada, not to flex, but we have free healthcare. Um, I can't imagine being an entrepreneur in the States. There would be so much more pressure to be able to like afford your own private insurance. So kudos to anyone that owns a business in America because I could never. Exactly. Being an entrepreneur is a lot more work than nine to five if you want to be successful. One thousand percent. So again, if we go back to all these plushies on the shelf behind me, shout out makeshift.com. Um, my partner is a co-founder of uh, one of Canada's fastest growing startups. He works all the time. He's literally in a business meeting at a restaurant right now. He was on a business trip last week, travels all the time, works insane hours, and then I'm working all the time. It's just, it's chaotic. It's chaotic energy over here, okay? It takes a very specific type of person. That's what I will say about that. I went to art school, but learned pretty fast that freelancing isn't for me and a nine to five art job just crushes all my creative drive. So I do a different nine to five to fund the art I wanna do. Demi, I love this. And this is what I think we need to see more of. We need to see more people talking about normalizing getting a job just to have a job and then enjoying your life outside of that job. That is my opinion. Okay, let's address this. Saying everything is a cult is dangerous because it's dismissive and glosses over things that are actually coercive and problematic. Yes, I will agree with this. Because if we think in the context of what I talk about on this channel, specifically MLMs, cults, and coaching, there are specific patterns of behavior, specific rhetoric that is used, specific narratives that are told in order to get people to not only believe certain things, but to act in certain ways. And so if we say, and again, I was making jokes about this, but we'll get serious for a minute. Um, if we say that everything is a cult, I will, I will admit Eliza. So I apologize if I offended you, um, that it does kind of discredit the fact that there are people get involved in very dangerous and harmful situations. 
because of that like cult like behavior. Not everyone wants to be a business owner or entrepreneur. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm so far behind. I apologize. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I chased money my whole life. Now I'm 30. I'm so content with my nine to five gig, especially since I have kids. Sorry, my laptop is dying. Give me a second. <laughs> Okay, if you're new here, chaotic energy everywhere. I am a hot mess express. So um, yes, I can't imagine again, owning a business, having kids, especially in like the infancy phases of owning a business. <gasps> so much stress, so stressful. Here in Switzerland, medical insurance is private and mandatory. Wow, yeah, I could not imagine. My criminal record has haunted me for years. Access to professional work isn't in the cards. I do a job I love, a medical courier. What is that? What does a medical courier do? Someone let me know in the comments. <laughs> I own a business on the side. It's not perfect, but it works. See, and this is the thing. I'm like, if you're interested, and this is advice I give to anyone who wants to own a business, do not feel that you need to pursue your business idea full stop off the hop. So the example I always give is like, let's pretend I wanted to open a bakery rather than take the hours it would take to build a business plan, go to a bank, apply for a loan to open a business as a baker, blah, 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 go thousands of dollars into debt. Instead, what I would do is I would start selling custom cookies, for example, and I would do it on like Facebook or set up a little website and I would start selling those. Once I start gaining more traction in that, maybe I'd start selling some cupcakes too. So now I sell cookies and I sell cupcakes and I would build it slowly on the side. If you have the interest in being an entrepreneur, you don't have to quit your job and start the business. Start small, test out the idea, test the market, and then see if you can build it from there. That's my advice for today. I sell, I sell, I don't sell. I share a ton of helpful, I think helpful Business advice on TikTok, if you're someone who's on TikTok and you're interested in learning more about, you know, like building a side hustle, building a business, I would suggest you go and follow me there. Or you can check out my business content here on YouTube. Okay, enough self-promotion. Sorry. I hate the saying that if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Not true. And you might end up hating the thing you once loved. 1000%. We see that too. Um, I mean, I know it with friends who are creators. It's like we all became creators because we love to make videos. We love to talk to our phones, whatever. And then you end up burning yourself out because you're creating so much content. It makes it like not fun anymore, right? It's like people who want to be like influencers. And then they realize that like once you're an influencer, everyone is or like a celebrity. Everyone's all up in your business. And you're just like, I didn't want this. It's like, well, you made your bed. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. I chase money my whole life. I'm so content with my nine to five as a school district maintenance guy, especially since I don't have to worry about work. Exactly. Medical courier for my job brings my lab blood samples for testing. Okay. Interesting. If someone gets a biopsy at a rural hospital, I pick it up and deliver it to a centralized laboratory. Very cool. Gotcha. So you're just driving. Cool. Eliza says, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. I feel like everything sounds like fun and like it would be a good idea. And then once you do it enough, you're like, this isn't fun anymore. Like, you know, testing out ice cream flavors would be a cool job. But I'm sure if I did that for a living, I would hate ice cream after a while. <laughs> I don't want to eat any more ice cream. I like my true time freedom. I'm right there with you, Monica. Clock in, clock out. Right now, I'm on the couch enjoying this life. <laughs> we appreciate it. Okay. Um, I just spent a good 20 minutes rambling. I found um, one more video if we're interested. Drop a one in the chat if you want to learn the six little money mind shifts you need right now. So uh, she talked about this one in the very first video we watched. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I thought maybe we could watch it. And then I'm going to hop off. Because it's. I'm assuming this business meeting is going to end soon and we're going to have someone cameo an appearance in the background shortly. Now I want ice cream. Sorry to do that to you. <laughs> 
my job is mostly listening to audiobooks while I drive through mind numbing prairie lease land. I have my own business as a therapist. It's hard work and I always feel like I could be working. Exactly. You cannot turn it off. All you do is think about your business. I get a whole four days, four day weekend and don't even have to think about it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, nobody dropped a one, but we're going to watch the video anyway, because it's my live and we do whatever I want. <laughs> I skipped the intro because she plays music and I don't want to get the YouTube algorithm out of me. Okay. Let's give it a watch. Oh, Elise. And she writes, hi, Marie, big fan. My question today is about my money mentality. You see, I recently became aware that I'm surrounded by poor people. What I mean is everyone in my life at the moment has a poor person mentality, including me. It feels like my family, friends, and even my partner are stuck in scarcity. They're scrambling for dollars, stressed out about bills, complain about the government stealing from them, and say everyone's got their hands in your pocket. It's gotten to the point where movies are out of the question, date nights don't exist, and there are no more nice dinners. It sucks. So my question is, how do you break out of the scarcity mentality when everyone around you is stuck in it? Should I cut everyone off and move to Greenland? Or do I have to constantly read books about money? Help love Elise. Elise, this is an awesome question, and you are so not alone. Not many people I know grew up with wealth, whether that's actual cash or an abundant money mentality. Now, here is the good news. You can totally break out of your scarcity mentality and create a shift in the energy around you without moving to Greenland. Now, I know you put a lot of emphasis on the people around you, but as you know, the only person you can change is yourself, so that's where we gotta focus. Here are six ways to turn that money frown upside down. Number one, you gotta write yourself a fat reality check. Elise, I know you probably know this, but let me remind you. Almost half the world, that's like three billion people, live on less than $2.50 a day. And 80% of all humanity lives on less than $10. I'm muted. Uh. Now, I did a little research on you, and I'm pretty sure. I was just being snarky. You didn't miss anything. You don't fall into either one of those populations. Now, I'm not making you wrong for wanting more, but you got to get that true abundance starts with appreciating everything you already have right now. So if you want out of that scarcity mentality, you got to start appreciating what you got and make it a habit. You've got a roof over your head, you have clean running water, and you have some damn cute clothes. I think Oprah said it best when she said, be thankful for what you have, you'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never ever have enough. Number two, get an ATM. What? Steal a cash machine? Okay. Um, this is a weird video. Sorry, I paused it at a weird time too. I just want to address this comment. Does she speak with this tone all the time or does she just these condescending videos? Um, she mostly, in all of the things I've seen, she speaks like this. Like, even when she spoke at the Art of Living thing, she had, like, the same kind of intonation. I think it's just her style of delivery. Some people find it appealing, so. Yeah. She's saying what Jesse Lee Ward says, don't surround yourself with poor people because you won't be rich. Yeah, I feel like we just watched a training last week where they said the same thing. The secret to getting rich is to, like, have rich friends. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did want to link Ov's um, Etsy shop. Ov, if you can put the discount, DC's discount code in the chat. I think it's just DC, like D-E-E-C-C-C-C-E-E. D-E-E-C, D-E-E-C-E-E. -E -E -E. That was way harder than it needed to be. Um, but her code saves you 10% off, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If you haven't already given the stream a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Sorry, I keep looking at my camera that I have set up, even though it's dead. So I'll start. Okay. Um, yeah. Rather than cutting people off, why not look for a higher paying job? Exactly. There we go. So the the discount code is DC. Ov sells a bunch of cute little stitch markers, earrings, and that sort of thing. So check them out.
No silly girl, it's an automatic transformative mantra. That's just a simple phrase you put on automatic repeat that transforms your money mindset. This is something I personally use to overcome my own scarcity mentality around money, and I still use it to this day. Here it is. Anytime you part with money, whether you're paying a bill or you're buying something, say this. There's always more where that came from. This might sound silly, but there is real power in the words that we say to ourselves and immense power in rituals. It's a super simple way to retrain yourself in the truth with a capital T about money. Number th okay, and again, like I mentioned earlier, I think it's important that we have this time of self-reflection. We think about our relationship with money. We understand how it can improve. However, attitudes like this don't take into account systematic oppression and and situations that people find themselves in that make them unable to make more money. So it's not just simply believing that there are always opportunities to make more money when we think about disadvantaged people who that is not a possibility for. Some people are on a fixed income and they don't have the physical or mental capacity to be able to work a second job to make more money. And so making it seem so simple and sound so simple to me is very, very dangerous. Number three, BYOL, bring your own luxury. Who says you can't have nice dinners at home? In fact, I actually prefer to eat at home. My meals taste way better, they are so much healthier, and they cost a fraction of the price. You can take any inexpensive dinner and make it a nice dinner if you plate it beautifully and you light some candles and you put on some music and you wear something nice. With just a little bit of effort, you can take a cheap dinner and make it an amazing dinner. In fact, one of my favorite resources for budget-friendly recipes is this magazine, cooking light number four does she have an affiliate link <laughs> or start a fun fund before we go any further i gotta say you and your partner have got to get on the same page about money now you can't change your family or your friends but it is vital that you and your man get and stay on the same page regarding finances you can sorry i was mid-chew there why is she assuming that we're all in heterosexual relationships. Just a question for the class. You can make busting out of your scarcity mentality something you work on together and the fun fund can help. Here's what that is. It's a checking account or a piggy bank or a pickle jar that's earmarked for fun and fun only. So that money is exclusively for movies or meals out or other things you and your partner might normally say we can't afford. Number five, build your knowledge bank. Now you said, do I have to keep reading books about money? And my answer, until you get your money game together, yes! And whether it's books or seminars or audios, it's not just about reading or listening, but you actually have to implement it. Please don't pay to go to seminars to teach you how to be good at money. <laughs> Especially if you want to have money and keep it. Now, as for money seminars, they can be a little cheesy and people may try and sell you some more stuff, but that doesn't matter. You'll still learn a ton. And what's even more important, you're going to be around people who are actively improving their own money mentality. Number six is spread the wealth. So this is another strategy that I've personally used, and it's a little bit counterintuitive. So anytime you're feeling a lack around money, you've got to give some away. So for example, if you catch yourself in major scarcity mode, you should donate a little bit of money to a cause you believe in. Now, if you're not sure where to donate, uh, we have an organization that we love. It's called Kiva, and we also have our own lending team. And I'll put links below this video so you can check it out. Give money to my charity so I can get more tax write-offs. <laughs> Another way to spread the wealth is to just be generous with your friends and family. There's something amazing about saying, I'll treat, even if it's for something simple like a coffee or a home-cooked meal. Now, as we've discussed, you cannot change your family or your friends around their money mentality, but you can be a living demonstration of a more abundant reality. That is my not if I don't have any money like this is so tone deaf. She's just assuming that we all have money. We just don't want to spend it. But uh, I'm going to say most people don't have the money. Actually, lady, I ate your cue, Elise. I hope it helps. Now, I would love to hear from you. Have you broken out of a scare? OK, we're not watching that. Blech. OK, um, hi, everyone. Welcome back. I am going to scroll through the million comments that I missed while we were watching that video. 
Um, da, 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 da. Beyond, if you have a business, send me an email, send me a link. Let me take a look at it. If you're, if I deem you not a scammer, I will happily give you a shout out on my channel. Uh, yeah, I didn't like any of the, the rhetoric she used in that, uh, in that video it just made me feel not good. If the secret to, if the secret is to start hanging out with rich people, well, why would rich people want to hang around with poor people? Exactly. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. We did, I might have been last week. We watched a masterclass of a woman that basically told us the secret to getting rich is to hang out with rich friends, which given that knowledge is like you would never as someone like, let's say I had a job that paid me 50K a year and I wanted to make six figures. So I need to find friends that make a hundred grand a year. Well, they're not going to want to hang out with me because I'm just a little lowly $50,000 a year worker. So like, how do I get in with the rich people if the rich people only hang out with the rich people? There's a gap in the logic. What is money mindset? Honestly, I don't know. I can have all the mindset in the world. It won't make money magically appear in my bank account. Thank you, Monica. Say it louder for the people in the back. We cannot just make money fall out of the sky. Uh, Meredith is asking, have you ever considered checking out manifestation coaches? I have a few. Yeah. So I will drop a link in the chat. I did a video a couple months ago now, probably about why I don't believe manifestation is real. Someone also gifted me access to the manifestation babes online course. So I'm going to be working on a video for that as well in the coming weeks. I also have a video about why quantum mechanics um why using quantum mechanics from like a spirituality perspective isn't real obviously i understand quantum mechanics are real um but the way that these like spiritual gurus use it mm -mm, not a fan so i will drop that video in the comments as well we believe in science here on this channel so if you're not a science girly or guy or non-identifying individual this probably isn't the place for you have a savings account. Exactly. Okay, sorry. I'll back to the questions. The pickle jar isn't collecting interest. Yeah. <laughs> what if I don't have a partner? I'm single. Yeah, Monica, you are um, exempt from this advice because this is for people who are in relationships only. We're not about inclusivity here. <laughs> cooking at home isn't a bad idea. Agree. I actually save a ton of money cooking at home. I eat most of my meals at home for a while there. We were not doing that. And then I was like, we need to rein this in and start eating at home. So I will agree with you. Give me a one. Drop a one in the chat if you like to eat meals at home. <laughs> I'm just kidding. William, what's up? What's up? I have cut back eating out for sure. I agree. Cooking at home isn't a bad tip for sure. I will give her that one. Save money, eat out less. So everyone, what I want you to take away from this live video today is that if you're looking to get rich in 2023, stop eating takeout and only cook at home and you will get rich. Okay? I like cooking at home. I don't need her to tell me that. I'm very offended that her charity shares a name with my favorite. <laughs> so Kiva is actually, it's been around for a long time. It's basically where you like give a loan to someone in a developing nation and then they can use that loan to build a business and then they have to pay the loan back, I believe. So it's like a, a, uh, a fund that never ends basically. So if I donated $10, that $10 was used to build a business, let's say in China, then that person pays that $10 back. Then that $10 can go to someone in India and so on and so on. Like it cycles through the program over and over again. It's actually pretty cool. However, that being said, I learned about Kiva like 12 years ago. I don't know if there's controversies around it since then. I have not stayed up to date. So I don't want to say that I'm um, condoning it, but <laughs> it was cool. It seemed like a cool concept like 14 years ago when I was studying international development in university. Okay. The thing with these Huns is that the nugget of truth has feelings of bullshit. Exactly. Exactly. Assuming we're all straight, 100%. Not a fan. Not a fan of that. When I have extra money, I give it to mutual aid. Sometimes paying for like food for a homeless friend or meds for a kid who got hurt. That's awesome. So great. And see, we can be generous without having to like create a whole charity 
and broadcast about how great we are, which is the vibes I get from any of these people that are like, I donate 10% of my business's earnings to charity. I look up copycat recipes of some really good stuff for super cheap. Yeah, I made my partner um, Chipotle at home a couple weeks ago. So like we basically just made burrito bowls at home and he was shocked that we could do that at home because he eats Chipotle more than he probably should. Um, so it's very, very simple to just, you know, cook at home sometimes. <laughs> the answer to this is to be the guy who sells the rich kids drugs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you should sell a course on that. Look for people with expensive haircuts, talk to them, and if they talk about substance use, try to pitch them. But think of all the money you could make selling an online course. Exactly. There are very few people that understand quantum mechanics. That's exactly why I talk about it. And I consulted my partner, who is much more of a genius than I. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. All right, friends, I think I'm going to sign off here. Uh, we actually went much longer than I thought. I thought we were going to watch those two like five minutes videos and be done in 30 minutes. So thank you everyone for hanging out with me. Thank you for humoring me in the chat and for listening to my very long winded rants this evening. Appreciate that. Appreciate you. If you haven't given the stream a thumbs up yet, you should absolutely do so unless you absolutely hated it. In which case, feel free to give the stream a thumbs down, okay? Thumbs up if it was good. Thumbs down if you hated it. Those are the rules. I didn't make them. New video coming out to those of you that aren't members tomorrow morning. I will release it to the public. It's, I'm trying to remember, life coaches saying scammy shit. Business, business coaches. Business coaches saying scammy shit on TikTok. So look forward to that. We love it. We love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Take care. Comb your hair. AJ, I'm working on thinking of some stories. I'm not a very good like storyteller. I feel like I don't know. Most of my stories I could tell in like 30 seconds. So I'll have to think on that one. I hope everyone has a nice night as well. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you in my next video. Let me figure out how to put on DC's end screen because I hacked into her restream. Here we go. Bye.